Hello Astrotometry, this is the fourth part in the War of the Worldviews series. I wanted to bring up a question that Washu um, asked about the nature of a coronal mass ejection and how it relates to the sun grazing comet. And he brings up a very good point about what if the coronal mass ejection that escapes the solar system um, in a sense returns to be that same sun grazing comet. And this is completely consistent with astrotometry's um, understanding of the symmetry between time and space. That point where the, where the comet reaches the sun is that, that same moment where the photon curves back around on itself in, in time space. And so the, 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 in astrotometry, the photon spin entanglement happens because of the nature of the photon uh, being more of an orbit than this linear thing that we see because of the velocity of the of, of the light. In other words, the speed of light is so so fast that the orbit that it makes through the curved space-time is incredibly um, uh, oblique. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is a this is a very very interesting uh, kind of thing that we're observing. And I was kind of disappointed that no one that has been watching uh, the channel noticed the comet that was captured by the SOHO C2 and C3 cameras uh, on the SOHO satellite. But there was a sunspot, and this um, solar feature coincided with this uh, with this comet, as I have, have pointed out, that is, is a feature that we need to study. And this particular type of symmetry, this particular type of coincidence, has to do with the velocity and the trajectory of the incoming comet. This particular comet didn't um, hit the sun, it, it grazed past the sun. But in astrotometry, and I'm going to go ahead and maybe try to pull back here and see if I can get the, um, the board in the background, um, and explain this. Uh, this vision, this what I'm what I'm seeing here. Um, so in astrotometry, the the concept is that the the uh, sun is the uh, F here, and this is the Earth over here, and the field that we normally conceive as existing between the Earth and the sun is actually a time-space membrane. In other words, what has happened um, and what will happen is sort of represented in the physical orbit between the Sun and the Earth. When the Sun grazing comet enters this field between the, the Sun and the Earth, it leaves a mark on the Sun with respect to the Earth with respect to what we're seeing because of the relationship between the Earth and the Sun. Everything on the Earth is being translated through the Sun continuously. The, the Sun is the, is the fold over which the Earth is translated through time. And when the Sun grazing comet comes in to this field with an with a inconsistent orbit we see a spot on the sun, not because there's a spot on the sun, but because of what we are is being disturbed in its translation through time. We usually only consider the inconsistencies that we see in the energy coming from the sun. In other words, the, the coronal mass ejections and the, the coronal holes and the features that we can visualize. But what the rest of it is, is, is invisible to us because of its phase relationship with our matter. In other words, the, it's there. It's not that there's nothing there. It's not that there's emptiness there. It's just that its relationship to what the Earth is has to do with the continuity of the Earth's matter. And it's when there are discontinuities 
in that relationship that we can see what is happening or we can see a difference, we can see a change in the energy feature, energy structure. If nothing moved on the Earth and it moved <clears throat> with a complete circular orbit around the sun and there was nothing else around it, the, the relationship would be that the sun would be just this still uh, luminous body if the Earth was in this perfect orbit around it. But it's not. We have the movement of the seas. We have the, the movement of other other features in in the cosmos. And those are reflected uh, supersymmetrically through time space. And from analyzing these features, we can actually sort out the very mechanisms of the magnetic force. The magnetic force is abstracted in all of the modern physics, in all of the modern studies. The electromagnetic force is an abstraction. There's not an, a known mechanics for it. The, the uh, unified field, Einstein's unified field and quantum mechanics are, have been efforts to describe the, uh, the actions of the electromagnetic fields, but there's not a underlying understanding of what that field actually is and the physics of the actual field because we've abstracted it mathematically. And so astrotometry provides the clues that we need to actually sort out what the electromagnetic field actually is. And that's very, it's very, very exciting uh, from that perspective. And also very, very challenging to uh, what we think we know about the nature of the universe. Because cause and effect is a sort of illusion that has to do with our disposition with respect to time. In other words, the, the gravity that we experience on the Earth is related to our movement through time. 